Martin Nevin, you're very welcome to the podcast, Talking Sport with Stan. Great to have you on, buddy. Well, it's an honour absolutely to be asked on here, Sean, and thanks very much, bud. Not at all, not at all. I was saying, um, when, uh, you know, when I was asking, I was like, you know, your whole idea with picking the, the best top 15 in Lamford, the best 15 you played with or against back a few months back, it was um, a great idea to get everyone thinking and kept people ticking over for a couple of weeks. And it actually sparked the idea in my head to go forward with this, you know, so I'm thankful to you as well for... Uh, breaking down a few boundaries. I know that's that's no problem. It's just it was an idea just everyone has outboard them just to give them something to do for a couple of weeks. And uh, I think everyone gave really an honest an honest assessment of players they played with bar maybe three or four that I would have liked to see that say like put put risk their, ne- their neck on the line a bit but they didn't do it as the way yeah. I would have liked them to do it, you know. But look at everyone there was a good bit of crack and that's the main thing, you know, over this old virus and stuff that's going on and it's ah, exactly. Things, you know, it's just it's just something to take take your mind off off it. You know. Yeah, for so sure. And should look, I say you'd agree yourself. You could pick a different team every day of the week if you wanted to. Well, you could. There's players there that I was thinking afterwards. I left this fellow. I left that fellow. And it was it's, it was hard. You know, I left like I Peter Brady. He thought he was a fair player. I left left him out. Barry Gilleran I left him out. I left some class players left out from from other clubs as well. You know, like Davy Barden and players like that. Yeah. Uh, that's just sort of getting a mention as well, you know, and and just it's just it's just hard, you know. But you only could pick fifteen, you know, and that was the fifteen I picked. That. Ah, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's no, it's no slight, it's no slight on anyone, you know. It's just picking a team and get on with it. Get on with, you know, a bit of crack, you know, a bit of fun, yeah, you know. Exactly. I know. Fair play to you. Fair play to you. you generated some buzz, and uh, it kept it kept everyone going there for a couple of weeks. So fair play. And it was actually, you know, it was it was that whole idea that kind of pushed me to go ahead with this just to have a chat with different lads about um you know different experiences and everyone's story as well and you know you were a man on my list now in a while so i'm just delighted now you come on i'm looking forward to the chat buddy i know Pat, it's a good idea you know, it's fair play idea. i wish you the best of luck with this for the uh for, for future as well it's a great idea to do stan and it's something you get you get you get a bit from everyone you know you everyone is going to have different stories so it's going to be good, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right, so we'll, we'll dive straight into the accolades, um, my good friend. So we have three, three schoolboy medals, um, two of them championships. Is that right? Two of them championships at Stone Park National so, All of Stone Park. I think we were the victims of one of them, were we? Yeah, you were the victims of one, but we, 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 were, the victims, <laughs> we were the victims against you a few times ourselves. So. <laughs> can't, can't be complaining. I remember... Remember those uh, those games out in Newtown? Am I right in saying that? Yeah? Mm-hmm. Newtown, yeah, we had some great games, we had great battles, you know. Ah, oh, great, great days, yeah. Uh, under twenty one C Championship with Grattans, under twenty one B Championship with Grattans, and the Junior mm-hmm. Championship with Grattans. Yeah, you took us in the under twenty. We moved up to the under twenty one A Championships, and he beat us by a pint. I think, I believe it or not, I think you got the win and pint against us. We oh. were maglamate with Grattans, uh, and there was Keane, and there was another team as well, and. He beat his way a pint out in Newtown God. in the quarter final or the semi final. I think he got to the final, I'm not sure. I think Dromar won it that year. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Dromar very strong that time, yeah. Very strong. Uh, junior league with Slashers, intermediate league with Slashers, your two senior championships, then with Slashers, and uh, league titles. So, come here, we'll go back to the start. I suppose your, you know, the, the schoolboy the school football that was, it was a, a massive part of your life. Was there any other sports that were interested you from a young age? I did a bit, of, a bit of boxing, young age. I did a bit of boxing and small bit of athletics, but uh, the main sport was uh, for me. It's a bit of soccer, but the main sport was Gaelic for me. Always, you know. Yeah, yeah, you always had a strong interest in it, had you? I always, I, I enjoyed Gaelic from a young age. I enjoyed when I was playing when I went out to Stone Park there at uh, National School. Just, it was just Gaelic for me. Just the man, uh, principal out there was just mad Gaelic himself, and it was just Curry man. He's just brilliant, was you know so. Yeah, and uh, was it was Flora was involved that time too, was he? Was he still you know, no, I think he's still, no. Master, Master Brandon. Eamon Brandon was the main Oh man. yes, that's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eamon, Eamon played a big part as right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, man, you know. Yeah, and she look at you like Stone Park, you know, Elas were a big part of the successful Stone Park run there for a couple of years, you know. Yeah, well we won a couple. I uh, I won a, a when I was in sixth class I won I won both, I won the league and I won the championship. I captain uh, team, both both team, but uh, fifth, I won. 
I think it was uh, I think a championship. I think it could have been, but uh, no, Master Brendan was the he was the main the main man out there. He got everything rocking and rolling out there playing the football, and from a young age. Like he was the fellow that got me really into the Gaelic, like I have to say, you know. So he he played, he played a massive part in say, you know, keeping you involved yeah. and keeping you interested. I owe, I owe a lot to that man, to be honest with you. Yeah. He's the man that kept me up playing the football. He was all about the Gaelic, like the foot to keep at the Gaelic, like, and I kept that. At, and at a young age, I kept that with him. So I've had to say, a main, main fellow to start me off. Then the footballer would be probably nearly him, I'd say, you know. Yeah, yeah. I know he, we, we can all relate some. You know? Yeah, he's such an interesting. He's a gentleman, him, and actually, yeah. Well, a gentleman. He often picked me up. He used to pick me up from the house when the matches, as well. My father would be gone away. He'd come and pick me up from the house and that. And a young age, he was. Um, very that made some difference, didn't it? Well, I made a serious difference. I went down to, um, um, to, to sevens. There's you all call it sevens, mini sevens in Longford, and then you go up to Dublin. You play up in Dublin, you know. And yeah. we know all Ireland tickets the 14 lads is picked you know okay and I think it was in the night 2000 I think it was 2000 and I got I got picked me and Mark Smith believe it or not got picked from Longford Brilliant. and it was Curry and Galway I, mean, I got two all Ireland tickets to to go and it was Curry and Galway and my principal was a mad Curry man <laughs> and he, ended up, he couldn't get tickets anyway and I ended up giving him the all Ireland tickets to go oh, him and his brother because he, he looked man, after, he looked after me well for a long time there playing football and stuff. He was very good to me. So just fair play so to him. It's nice. To, it's nice to do it back, you know. Just you certainly made his day when you handed them over. I know he did, man. Look, he was the man made my day. Loads very good to me. Loads of times I have to be fair about things. Mm. Remember when they went down? He, he bought me. Get, get, went down to Joe Darkins and bought me a new pair of boots and all, and came up to the house and surprised me from my birthday. So that's unbelievable. And and then and we county. Time before your first county final uh, with Slashers, um, he rang me. I wasn't chatting him in a long time and rang me after about two and a half years. Wanted to have a chat with me before the final. And uh, we met up for a bit of lunch and I had a chat about don't be nervous and stuff and that. So, isn't that unbelievable? Like, isn't that what it's all about? But that's what it's all about. You don't forget things like that, you know. No, and like, and, and you know, it's nice to feel that someone that played, played such a key role in you know, in your underage development as well, like touching an image and. You know, it's uh, that's very unique now. I have to say, I know him and Brendan was a gentleman. Though, to be honest, with you. he was the probably the main fella now behind everything to get me into the football, and it was great to get into the football because the Gaelic was a better sport to me than any of the sports. You know. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's that's great. Thanks for sharing that, Martin. It's a great story. That like, yeah, fair play. You know, and you know how many car- other characters like that around, and the difference it makes to a player. You know. Hundred percent. He was the motivation for me now because he, he used to go out there and he he was all into. The, he used to love the Gaelic. Like he'd be talking about the Gaelic like even at lunchtime, and we'd be out messing with a ball. He'd have a few lads messing with a ball, and he was the main lad behind it. Be honest with you, at that time. So I have to be Could fair. To me. Yeah. I say you, you miss the schoolboy days. Then I'd say when you're moving on to play with nah, the you club. Would, you would. You'd miss, you'd miss old lads there. You thinking back. You'd be always thinking back at old things that happened. And, Playing football and friends he made, and you know you're not you don't see them as much now. No, but look at that's that's part of life, isn't it? And <laughs> did did Eamon have any involvement in the club then at that stage, or was it just more the school? No, he was just all Eamon was all uh, uh, club, uh, all uh, school, all yeah, school. You know, any any of the clubs at all. He he slashers beside him, and he had gatons, he had gatons beside him. He never had any influence in anyone. Them anyone. Okay. Okay, and you, you would you would a lot of football play with Grattans before you moved on to Slashers, uh, Martin. So, like, was that a difficult changeover? Yeah, it was. It was hard to leave. To be honest, it was very hard to leave. I was around, I was around, I think seventeen or eighteen, eighteen, I think it was. Mm. And the transfer, I just wanted to go for a year to play a senior football. Yeah, I really wanted to go for a year. Well, like. I played a lot of, uh, with Grattans. I enjoyed playing with Grattans. Kevin Victory was out there. He was one of the man. Donald Kane, and all them oh, lads. Yeah. And I enjoyed, actually really enjoyed them at them, but um, I just needed a, it was just something, a different challenge I needed, you know, at that stage. And I, I just didn't think Grattans was going to make to be a senior club at that stage. So you want to play at the next level? I just wanted to play, it was only for one year I really wanted to play for a try it out, you know? Yeah. And have you any, I suppose, uh, what was your standout memory from playing with Grattans? Any of those uh, achievements in particular, any of them stand out? 
I won a junior championship with them um, against Rackline, and that was the big one because uh, Rackline was, was hot, hot favourites going into the, the final. Hot, very hot favourites going in. Mm. Big right up in the paper week beforehand. We were just meant to just roll over and get bet, you know? Yeah. And we went out and we bet them a year or nine pints, bet them hands down easy. So that was a that was probably the standout memory for me with, with Grattans. I really enjoyed that day. I broke me I broke me my leg. I broke my shin bone on the same Jesus, day. Jesus, you did not. Honestly, yeah, I broke in Paris Park, broke the shin bone on the same day. I broke oh, the leg the same Jesus, day. What a mess. That's all. But that was probably the standout standout time for Grattans. I really enjoyed doing that, you know. Great, great, great. Nice to have that look back on too. Uh, it's always nice to look back and things like that, you know. I still okay. have the medal. So I like, oh, nice do you? Yeah, I still have the medal. Still was have the medal. And come here, was it a smooth move then into slashers, or was it a big change for you? Were you um, straight away? Big, big, big change. Like it was just, just it was just kind of messy. It was a messy because um, I, they didn't really want to give me the transfer, you know. Okay. And I wasn't expecting the transfer then, and then I was met, thought I had to wait a year out. He opened up the Crow Park. I thought I had to wear it way here out in football. I just maybe a week, Mickey Lynch down there, he was the fella. Uh, a few lads got got on, got things done for me. Yeah. But it was only a week or two beforehand, I knew that I was actually a slashers player. You know, I thought I had to wear a year out. I had no training pre season training done or not. Okay. I had to look the slashers. It was, just, it was just different, you know, pace know. of the game was different. Everything physicality was different. So, how, long, how long did it take you to adapt, do you think? It took me seven or eight years, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I, come didn't, out. I, did, I didn't play him properly until I was 25, 26. So. <laughs> and, and what, what, what was that? Was the commitment levels different, Martin, obviously? The commitment levels just, just, was just serious, you know. You just, there was no one like, you couldn't cut corners. There's just different, even fitness levels. I remember going out with uh, Grattans, I'd be up there at the top, you know, and then, when I went up to Slashers there, Jess was nearly at the back. Well, at the back, it's it. To be mm. honest, the levels are just on the human, just different, you know. So, and it was just big change. Everything was a change. I um, I gave it a give it a go. I gave it a go at Slashers. Who was, the, who was the first manager you played under at Slashers? Uh, John, John Murphy. John Murphy. John okay. Murphy. Lovely man. John Murphy is a lovely man. It gave me I had a fair fair crack at the hip. I, I remember I started. First championship against first championship match I started for the Mills 18 against um Rackline Rat was and I absolutely right. I had a, night, a nightmare nightmare taking off a half time I had a nightmare and I just never got looking for the rest of the year after that. And what were you thinking after that? Like, what was your oh, I just I just I um I kind of regret determined, determined to keep going. No, I kind of if I got in a downer, be honest with you. Got in a downer, got in a downer, had a mare, and then just, I never probably quite trained hard enough either. So it was all kind of all self inflicted. Yeah. I know. Was, yeah. But like, you, you, you seem to persist a lot through all that, in fairness to you. Yeah, I just, I, I tell you what happened then. I just, I gave, I was him in the hall, and then I miss a year, I miss another year, and then I didn't bother going back and do messing around or drinking and, of course, eating all around me and things like that. So, I, was there, I took, any, any players or anyone in particular reach out to you then to try and get you oh, back? Or? No, a lot of the lads reach out to me. Sure. I was telling them I was back in all. Sure. I was back all right, back at the pub. I've <laughs> 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 been drunk. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened there. Be truthful about it. You know, I met loads of promises when I was drunk and things. And yeah. I was I'll be back and just never, you know, never, never went back. And then I, I was. About 25, 26, and I was a big way. I think it was around 17 and a half stone, I think it was. And I was in the pub one day, and, and I heard a few lads chatting about football, and I just walked out. Or me name getting mentioned, I walked out that I wouldn't get in the team, so that kicked it off. That kicked off, that's got you, got you motivated that, again. That gave me a little bit of a rattle there, and that's why i never forget, it was around 6 o'clock in the evening time, I walked home, and I went up to the house, and Next day, I joined the gym and I started the mall gym and I was training with a black bag on me. And I put a black bag on me, it makes you sweat more and stuff and three or four tops all over. So that was helping me get down the way at the time. And what year and was this? Was this 13? This was in uh, 11. 
Eleven, okay. Two thousand and eleven. So had uh, had Dennis Dennis was on had come on board. Dennis, won the, was on, Dennis, was won, Dennis won the first Dennis had the first championship won this time. In ten. And were you involved in ten at all then? I was involved in ten, but sure, I was too big. I was I was at the start. I wasn't I was there at the start and I was never getting a sniff. I was wasn't getting a sniff in. I was only like yeah. um, a bench warm, you know, understand being honest about it. I was never I was just there I was there just to get just just to be there, you know. Be just, a part of it. Just to be, well, it was part of it, but sure, it's just you, 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 you think you're part of it. Be honest with you, you're not part of it until you're, until you're playing. Being truthful about, it. Mm. yeah, I believe you have to play. It. You have to, you have to earn a med, and that's not being disrespectful to anyone. But that's that's the truth of the matter. And would you would you feel like, are you saying like from a, a black and white perspective of like you're either making the team or not, or are you talking about say your contribution off the bench even? That you you, you yeah. weren't you weren't even reaching that stage where you were coming I on even. I was even I was twenty seven, twenty eight. Mm. So there yeah, that's that's give you a perspective where I was. I was just at the I no wasn't there at all. And so then I just remember one day I just went back to it I started training really, really hard. I was huge, I was up a lot of weight and then I trained really, really hard and, was, and I got the weight down, got out first year I was around I think it was 91, 92 kilos coming back when the first year I won it, I was the second year slashers won it. Mm. And then ye, ye pipped us, ye pipped us the year after that, then again. Ye yeah. be as in, in a in a replay. Yeah. And then the following year then we went on to win it again. And that was the that was really the last year I played was thirteen. Thirteen. And I'm, I'm just going back to earlier experience when John Murphy you know, he starts in that game. Like, would would you have been a lad that um, would you have been quite easily turned off at? Like, if you felt things weren't going well for you, did you? Was your initial uh, um, initial decision to walk away rather than say, right, look at, you know, put the head down here now and and uh, grind through it and and get get the game time again? I just kind of no, I just kind of took it. It was just kind of an easy way out, you know. I just I wasn't, I just didn't feel. Um, be honest with you, I didn't probably feel good enough at the time. I don't know. Mm. I, just, I let myself go. I wasn't as wasn't the sharp it was the year before. I was very sharp in the seventeen under seventeen. Uh, when, I, when I was seventeen, it was very good. It was yeah, really good year that year I had. Well, it makes it more difficult when you're not looking after yourself, as you know yourself. When you're not looking after yourself as well as you can, and you're trying to train. It's very. It makes everything a lot more difficult, doesn't it? Well, I made a pop a little bit of weight in that stage as well, and then I had tried to lose, and then I was getting when I was trying to lose, it, I was training a little bit overdone, and then I was pulling hamstrings, and then yeah, then I came back and I was playing. It. And first game was I was out in Newtown against Black Line, and I was just had a had a nightmare, nightmare, absolutely nightmare. Ball is fumbling everywhere, lovely dry weather, we're suited forward, it's fumbling out in the hands, nerves and everything. So yeah, you need you need to be coming into a season in shape, don't you really? Well, that was that was me downfall. I know, but uh, you, if you're looking back now, you, you, you know you give yourself the best. You give yourself the, uh, the best chance, really, when you do come in in sort of half middling shape, don't you? Any year. Well, that was my biggest mistake. Yeah, the biggest mistake and regret in football was was not keeping myself in shape through the uh, through the uh, winter. Yeah, I used to tell you, oh, I, the first time I ever did it was when we won it to the house in the thirteen. I, I did it and I was in good nick that chair. I was very good nick that chair. I trained through the whole Christmas. Didn't drink really at all. Trained really, really hard and was flying fit coming into the, that season. Flying fit. I was coming up with trains. I was in the first four or five runners. I was in, in the runs and I was never in that. But like there, I was flying, absolutely flying. So, I'm buzzing off that, I'm sure, too. Like, it, gives you, it gives you more belief. I was buzzing that time, thirteen. Yeah, just yeah. you know, EB is in twelve, and uh, and thirteen we had a few lads coming in differently, and a few of them. And I said, if I'm not in shape, I says I won't be getting, mm. I won't be getting playing. I'd be a sub, and I says, I said, look, I give it one a hard year, and see what I can do. So I trained myself. I lost a bit more weight. I lost another. I went down another stone, I think, and I kept myself in shape and was flying fit coming into the session. So. Well, fair play, like because you know you you, you 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 talk about a lot of challenges there, Martin. Like you know, as regards struggling with the weight, and you know even the experience of being like at at that age for any of us, like we all can relate to a time when we were 
taken off in the game or you know when you reflect back and how you felt it's not a nice feeling no matter when it happens and it can be a defining moment for a lot of lads you know and how they how they respond to it and like the the thing that's that's standing out and what, what i want to ask you about like like you you stuck at this the whole way you know you you know, you, you played right up to, you know, you, you had an achievement with the juniors at Grattans and you wanted to progress on and you wanted to play at senior level. Like, coming from, like, from, coming from a travelling background, like, that, that, that was such a huge achievement for you to even, to, to have, I'm, I'm sure, to have that goal and to have that drive to keep playing and stick at it. Um, like, like what, what are the challenges, like, in... You know, we, we, we don't see enough of it, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say to you. And, like, you, you were kind of one of a kind in that you stuck at it and you kept progressing and, you know, you were ambitious about it. Yeah, coming from a travelling background, I know a lot of things will be hard. The main thing is leaving school, uh, kids leaving school too early is a travelling background. That's, that's mm. probably the biggest thing that they, they did. Mm. They were up to things like this, but... um. Uh, for like when my like my kids when they grow up like that be that's all that's all kind of cha- change you know you know the cycle is yeah. kind of changing you now it's it's people is uh, the next generation is going to be at school and stuff like that and hopefully keep it up keep it up and keep sports because one rule in my house any it's in my household any to be you have to play a sport if you don't play a sport I'd be very upset now <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they won't want me up there. I don't care what sport it is. Yeah, I have to play the sport. I don't care if it's hurling, if it's athletics, boxing, running, swimming. I have to do a sport. That's the rule. No, I think That's you're right. Rule. I think it's very it's important. Really, just some um, other old things. Uh, I I believe the best sport to get into was would be football. And I hope the young lad. I hope the young lad. He plays a bit of Gaelic. Does a bit of boxing. I hope he. I hope me hand me heart. I hope he he picks the the football. I hope he picks the football because it's uh, just I enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed it as a young lad. And this, uh, I see a lot of travelling lads and this old bare knuckle stuff. And this is all pull, you know. And you just, that start copping their brain on a little bit now, you know, and mm. get into sport and stuff like that. And that's, I believe that's the way of forward, you know. If it's boxing in the ring, fair enough. Yeah. It's a sport, you know. So things like that, I don't mind. Just once it's in, in the ring and stuff, and not hold the ring and not things like this old things that's going on, bad old things going on, but sure. Keeps, so you on the right, road. keeps you on the right road. Keeps you on the right road. You know, it's like throwing enjoy in life and watching your kids grow up in a nice nice environment, playing football and stuff like that. That's that's my belief, you know. And what what do you think what was different about your mindset, Martin? What kept you at it? Because like I mean, like you you were very much alone, I'm sure. Yeah, I was I there wasn't many young lads, there wasn't many travelling lads playing football at the time. I don't think there was any, you know, but at the time I was playing, you know. Were they delighted to see you playing though? Uh, a few lads, oh, they all will say, I often went to play, so that's the, the Gaelic, that's the footballer yeah. lad, you know, to be all, you know, be all saying, you know, yeah. it's just, it's just, um, it's just like the lads I was, uh, I used to mix around with everyone, you know, I used to mix in with set the community, travelling community, I used to mix in with everyone, so, of course. it was like, it was like, like, I used to hang around with a lot of lads, different lads, you know, and I used to mix in well and chat well and, Talk about football. Football was a big thing, you know. Gaelic to me was was massive, you know, massive. Yeah. I really enjoyed watching. That. I enjoyed playing at the time, and so it was just always first choice for me. You know? It's great to hear, and uh, you know, it's great to hear your, you know, the attitude for the kids as well. Like you know, and I'm sure, well, I, like I, you, I, you have so much to I, teach them from your own experience, you know. Yeah, well, I hope a lot. Like other kids, traveling kids, like myself. Follies back and hopefully they come up and win the championship themselves and stuff like that and keep at the school and keep at the football and that's the way of forward. Sport is the way of forward and school education is the way of forward as well, you know. Yeah, and I'm sure like football has brought you so many positive things as well as regards, you know, friend friends for life, great memories, you know, even from a, a physical health point of view as well, you know, and even mental health point of view. Well, hundred percent. Look, if you haven't sport, this was a, was a thing. It just kept me taking over. You had to go to the gym. You had to. You're thinking. You're training this day. You have to eat this thing. You have to, mm. It was always good. You're always kept your toes. You know, so it's a way of forward. You know, sports is just a way of forward for everyone. Like, you know? well, fair play, Martin. It's great. And it's a great message for young kids as well to hear. You know, because um, you know you want you want to see more of it. You know, you want to see more integration in the game and. 
like, I, I, like I, I don't think you realise like you, you did pave the way for a lot of kids as well you know yeah well uh, thanks very much for that no I hope I hope they do I hope, I hope a lot of the lads there just keeps keeps up I know there's a few lads young lads coming up now there's good Gaelic lads coming up mm. so I hope they keep ahead there now so it's great to see like young young lads there coming in and there's a lot from all nationalities even all people playing it's, it's good you know so it's great to see great stuff great stuff so talk, talk to me about your um, your greatest achievement uh, in sport to date. So as you've addressed the uh, the Grattans, the Winda Junior Championship, that one stands out, I suppose, with slashers. It has to be one and only first county medal. Yeah. Can't. Describe, describe, tell me how you felt that time. Oh Jesus! Just it's just on, diff- on a different planet. It was it was just oh, I it was hard. Just just on, on really, you know, just yeah. I can't describe you, just the feeling it was just unbelievable to, to win the first county medal. It was just, it was just un, unbelievable. It was no emotion, just Dream couldn't excitement. I couldn't, I, I, I was buzzing for weeks, you know, it was just unreal, you know. Well, that's why you made that switch, isn't it? Like, you know, you, you, made, you made the switch, yeah, that's why you made the switch. It was just, it was just unreal. The first, first one was the best, the best ever. Got in the team, um. I I wasn't starting in the league at the start, and one I got injured, and I felt a little bit hard done because I trained really well and I played well in friendly matches, and I've kind of felt a bit hard done maybe in the first, in first one or two games, and a lad got injured in. Mm. I got in the team then, and and it, it was the first game was against Mullen Nocta. He came on, a lad got injured. He came on against Mullen Nocta. I scored one. I think it was one two against them, and that didn't kick that kick start the season for me. Then the rest is history. The rest is history. The kickstart season there, you know. I hear, I hear a lot of lads saying that you're you can play with slashers. Um, or your your old lad has to be um a banker. He has to be, or he has to be a judge. He has to be a guard. <laughs> that that's all bull, you know. It's, yeah. it's just a, if you're good enough, it's good enough. That's an excuse. That's okay. an excuse not not to try, you know. Yeah, good man. Fair play. Fair play. It's brilliant. And talk to me about your um, just about your. Your brief county experience as well, Martin. Why do you think you never uh, progressed on to that next level? Because I'm sure you had lots of opportunities. Yeah, I know. I was called in there when it was first with Luke and a few Luke Dempsey when it was seven or eight. I was called in there to play uh, under twenty ones, and I played a second half matching for Roscommon under twenty ones. And um, I was called in. I did two or three trainings. Just uh, to be honest with you, just. The surroundings just it just wasn't it wasn't for me, you know. I just I just I like just playing the, the lads I knew well and knew well. I just felt a little bit awkward coming in, you know. I just I knew the lads around town there from Slashers and it was just a little yeah. bit uh, it just wasn't my scenery, to be honest with you. Was it was that a big factor like uh, in the fact that you didn't feel comfortable amongst the fellas there? Yeah, well like I I I'd go up to Slashers there and I'd be uh, I'd be just up there the minute I'd walk in I'd be in slag slacking straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just the way I am. I can't help it, I'm not gonna change, no. And like there you just just wasn't you couldn't do that there. I well I well, like, maybe you could do, but I just felt like that I couldn't do it, you know. Well it and takes time, it takes time I suppose, you know, and it takes time. I'm maybe a bit nervous as well, but uh, that was probably one of the main reasons why uh, I didn't carry on then football. No, it's a shame. It's a shame too. But I can un- I can understand where you're coming from. But you know, it, ta- it takes time to break into circles and. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. I agree with you there. Yeah, that's just, yeah. I probably I never gave it enough time, and just probably that was it as well. You know. Yeah. Do you think that the next level and commitment too was was difficult as well? Do you reckon like there's you know there's. I'd say it'd be, honestly, it'd be too much of a commitment for me. You know, yeah. at, that, at that stage, at that stage, it'd be too much of a commitment for me. You know, but, uh, the commitment you were. County lads was given was just, it was mad, it was crazy. I think you know, answered because you weren't getting paid for the rat, you know, and the, the fair play to all the county lads all over the years that put in the commitment to put in. It was serious. You were you were training during Christmas and all like Stevens' is there. I seen you playing matches and the days after, you know. So I know, when you be at I was in the high stool having the pint. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you had the right idea. <laughs> so those, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know no. <laughs> at, that time, at that time, I thought I had the right idea. <laughs> yeah, it's all, we were the mad men out on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're talking about the slag in the dressing room, you were the ringleader as well, were you? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I was always one of the, the always one of the practical talkers up there. I used to love being slagging and be always messing. You know, just. Wind. I used to love winding lads up. 
<laughs> was there anyone, anyone but who was the easiest lad wound up? I used to love Wayne and Garrett Geo. <laughs> How would he react? Oh, I go mental. I, 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 used to, uh, I, was, I was born in England, you know, and I used to go up. I used to, I used to know it. They used to annoy the lads, and we'd have, when I know it'd be a match, I went up, used to go up in English jerseys on me, you know. <laughs> The guys would be all, be all kind of looking at this fella with the English jersey, the new one. I won't go on there with a new one. And Chikara G was on me, and I knew would wind him up and slag him, you know. He ripped, he ripped the jersey clean off me. I had the jersey on five minutes, it was ripped clean off me. That'd go away. Oh, honestly, yeah. Oh, that's priceless. That is priceless. It was all into the bit, I was always into a bit of, you know, a bit of crack, you know, a bit of a laugh. We always looked messy, oh. you know. Fair play as well. All that stuff added a bit of edge to training as well, which is no harm. My oh, God, training's Jesus, Mary and Joseph, uh, they were tough. We went through some hard trends with Dennis Carter. Mm. He physically and, and very good. They, were, they stood to us at the end, you know, but they were very, very, very hard trainings. There was long running you'd be doing. You'd be, we were doing a 3K runs that you'd do at a certain time. Mm. Yeah, there's all different, they're all different all different sprints there was, uh, there was every sort of thing going into you know, the, the, the ball the ball the game actually at the end was the best because you're absolutely hopping off one another and you're just getting up carrying an armage you know I often come in I often come in and bleeding and all and if you're just not you're just up running on the pitch knows if you're bleeding or something got slapped in it up if you're just not a mess and if you just play yeah. on that you know that you'd be no cry, whinging and crying about you go in very soon you know Oh, when you can get games going like that and training, you know, there's there's nothing better, is there? Oh, nothing better. No. She, we used to enjoy them. We used to hammer lumps on one another. It was just good, you know. They, they were the games that got you up for the for the big games, the championship. You were, you were prepared going in. You had trainings. We we were getting friendlies, and at one stage, the friendlies wasn't, wasn't as good as what their trainings was, you know, their training matches. Yeah. It's a real indicator. You know you're ready, don't you? Well, that was it, you know. That yeah. Dennis, Dennis had his ready that time. Dennis was a very, very good manager, best manager probably ever had. Brain wise, everything you he, he managed you as well, Sean. He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was just a tactical genius. I'm being honest about yeah. it. Yeah. Would he Would he touch him with you much, Dennis? Like, would you have kept in communication with you yourself? Or oh yeah, no. Well, Dennis, like Dennis, when I was playing the football there, Dennis, it it ring me up before matches, and he yeah. ring me up even before trains matches, and tell me. He wants this, you know. He, he, he'd always, he'd always keep you up to kick. If you weren't given enough, yeah, he'd look at but you're not giving enough. He said I need more in training from you if you want to play. So he'd always, he'd always give you a heads up if he's going to drop you. If you didn't give enough, he, if he felt like you were, you were holding back a bit, he'd, he'd, uh, he'd drop. He'd give you the phone call. He'd give you, he'd wake up now or you're dropped. Simple. Fair play. Yeah, he was Fair good. That very good day that way. So he was, he was. A gentleman, to be honest, a very, very decent man, gentleman, and just I really, really enjoyed playing under him. Though, to be honest with you, Ty is absolutely brilliant. Him and uh, Derek Ryan, very good as well. Oh yeah, uh, Derek sound man, yeah, very sound man, hundred percent. Benny, when Benny used to come up the blocker like myself, me and him used to start <laughs> talking about gambling and what we lose and what we win. And <laughs> <laughs> nice crew though. It makes an awful difference to a setup to have a nice gang like that around too. Ah, yeah, it was good though. It was good. I really enjoyed up there that time. And the lads, all, all the players was 100%. Yeah. You go up there, you, you had a big old crack with the lads up there. You, you'd be, you, you were going on the pitch, you'd be serious and you'd come off, you'd be, you'd be a slide and coming off, having a laugh. You'd be tired, but you'd be having a laugh with one another, you know, into the ice yeah. bath then. And home, the shower and home, then you know. That's what it's all about, lad. Yeah, I remember yeah. we were training up on Top Slashers pitch actually. One, it was actually 2013, it was you know, it was after our our county final drama of 12 and 13. Mm-hmm. I remember you coming out onto the pitch and you had the head bleached. We're only you wouldn't probably wouldn't remember now. We were just chatting for a moment before we were heading off training, and you had a lot of weight down at this stage. Yeah, so at, at at that time, you know, you wouldn't pass it. But I was just thinking, like, you were obviously, you know, you you, me- you meant business yourself personally that year too. Can you, can you talk me through, like, what kind of measures you went through to? Because it was a dramatic weight drop so quickly, like as well. Yeah, I know. I I lost. I'd overstone. I think it was around eight or nine kilos. I ended up losing. Um, I just kept me just kept myself in. Um, I trained very hard. I was running, doing a lot of running. I used to run maybe eight, nine mile, ten miles sometimes, just to test myself. Jeez. I was running laps with the 
um, laps of the mile there. Mm. I used to just test myself. I think it was around 10 miles sometimes just to test myself. And, and I kept myself in, in Nick. I watched a diet popper. That's, that's the only year I actually actually diet popper. Diet popper mm. that year, the whole year. I diet. I kept myself well. Like watched me weigh every week. I used to measure. I used to weigh myself three times a week. Maybe that everything would be right. That I felt good, felt strong, get everything, fitness, everything. And I really trained really hard that year because, to be honest with you, I knew my place would have been at risk because you had you know, one or two lads coming in, you definitely, and a few other lads there, and then you had younger lads coming up, and then you, I wanted to win so bad, I wanted to revenge so bad against she, to be honest about against Kilo. Mm. He, uh, 2012 was just a dagger in my heart. I absolutely I remember losing that final. I shook hands with you all, but went home and I laid down in the bed crying, crying in the bed. To be honest about it. Mm. So that was just that was just hard for me in 2012 losing. I just to be honest with you, it was a bad loser. In truth, so used his motivation, obviously. Got the motivation, got the thing going in, and then that's what did it then for me. And I just the 2012. Was thing I knew it had to be better. I knew it had to be fair. Try to be, improve my game and be fair. And I was, I was the year beforehand. I was playing inside in 2012. In 2012, I was inside, inside line. And 2013, they moved me out to wing forward because I was fit, very fit that year. Was, yeah. was that that was that my peak that time? Yeah. And so then you you inflicted a hanos. Then we got a taste of it. Nah, look, it was just, you were unlucky in a way. I told you, the man, okay. Game could have gone anyway. You lad there sent off there. Uh, big Simon got sent off early on in the game. So oh, any of those games could have gone anywhere, like you know, at those times, you know, there were. I look, at there, if there were even some, matches. There were some contests, yeah. Well, it was always good going up there. Look, at, you'd always never know who'd win. You had a very young side, hungry thing coming in, and like, yeah. you a good lad there. You had good footballers all around. You were solid all over the pitch. So you know, really weakness. It's just you, we had to be at our best to beat you. You know. That was the difference, you know. We were just lucky that day, you know. And do you miss it now, Martin? Do you? I I do and I don't. Be honest with you. What do you not miss about it? I don't miss losing. <laughs> 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 I don't. I know. I just. I I I don't. I don't miss. Um. Be honest with you, the training and stuff and things. It's just hard. I I have, I have five kids there now. Two sets of twins and then a little boy and two Leo. The young lad, he plays, he plays Gaelic and boxing. He does running and she does a bit of uh, swimming and stuff. The door, the oldest ones. And now we're trying to get the youngest ones in. The well, your time is surely filled up. Time is just, just hard. Like, you're trying to get yeah. time for everything. Like, he's, I, I, offer, I have to bring him sometimes from uh, from Gaelic to boxing straight away after. And then she's down in another place. I have to run there and get her in. And, Never off the road, no. Well, it's hard. And you know the youngest two has gone up too. And then they have to... Get them into some as well. So <laughs> I was fair play to you. Know, you'll, you'll be a great guidance to them, you know, like through your own your own playing experience as well, you know. And it's great to hear, you know, that you're, you know, it's great to hear any parent being so supportive of their kids and getting them into sport, you know, because you said the truth earlier on. There, it's so important. Oh, it's, it's vital. It's vital. Yeah. It's vital. Get them into sports. It's good for their health. It's good for everything. Look at kids. Kids needs kids need sport. They need sport. Mm. You yeah. don't have sport, you need sport. Sport is the way forward. Sport, to just get them out playing sports. That keeps them away from everything and keeps them away from drugs. It keeps them away from uh, alcohol too, you know, when you're yeah. young. Keep them into things like that, you know. As much sport as you keep, you keep them into, you know. Yeah, especially, especially from a young age as well, you know. Like, that's, that's the time to get them. And, you well, you know, get them when they're young. That's yeah. what they say. So if you could go back, Martin, is there anything you'd have done differently? I know you addressed yeah. it. You, t- you touched on it earlier on there a little bit. I would have dieted better through through the whole Christmas. It's hard work, nutrition, though, isn't it? Yeah, I would have dieted a lot better. I would have. I kill. I used to, have to kill myself to get back. When the boys would be have a head start, when they'd be already coming back and good now, Nick, I was just behind. I would have dieted better for for the for the whole time and being good, Nick, coming into training, was starting mm-hmm. back. That was my mistake. That and. I was really basically it. I was probably the main one that would have would have looking after myself better, keep me off to drink, not drinking as much, mm. and messing at Christmas time and you know yourself. And ah, look at his heart. Look at sure. Look at like a lot of us. I suppose if we weren't involved at the county, you know, it gave us it gave us a good step and so on going into the next year. You know, but um, ah, look at it's there's a lot more awareness about it the last few years too, and I think 
things have changed a lot. Lads look after themselves probably a lot better now during the winter time of the year. You know, you're always doing something. You'd be tricking at something or you'd be playing a different sport of some sort. Well, they'll have, they always have, it's a little bit different now, yeah. They have more things to be doing now yeah. anyway. Uh, they've more the good old gyms, good facilities. Every every nearly club has a gym themselves now, so it's, yeah. it's a bit more handier now using uh, getting to do that and then you know, they're reminding your nutrition better and everything. So, and you probably, you probably, as you said, you're so busy yourself now, you probably have you haven't the chance to do anything yourself now or even to play a bit of soccer maybe or mm-hmm. something, have you? Or? I know, I look, I just I was meant to go back in a bit of ball this year, I was going to go back this year, and I was up doing a bit. And I was actually trending there. I dropped a nice bit away again today, and then mm. the the oak happened. Uh, the COVID nineteen happened, and yeah. I never. I, never uh, I was meant to go back playing, and I just, I just. Back I thought there's no football. Being honest with you, and the way it just piled back on me again. I'm like, I'm like the um the naughty professor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm booty low I'm booty low for one minute and then I'm a professor comes to another next minute. So. Just stop. What <laughs> at the moment? <laughs> Chris, Jesus Christ! And come here. Um, do you think football should be back? Uh, truthfully, no. Being honest about it, I don't think football should be back. Mm. If this thing is still out there, who knows what problems young kids have? You're bringing home the kids. Yeah. Who knows what problems a uh, young child have, the like, kids have. The, we're saying a kid could have a heart condition that you probably don't know about yet because you probably never got something checked about it yet, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, you could have, like you're going to pass, if you have 30 lads there on the pitch and a lads in dressing rooms and stuff. Tony way. There's no way of knowing, like, isn't there? Yeah, there's no way of knowing. Like, you need to have the cure. Yeah, you haven't got that, you know? It's, or, you haven't got that. Test, testing even, you know? No, no one's going to be tested. Like, there's going, no, there's going to be no testing going on in club football, any. Yeah. So that's out, that's out the door there. So, okay, it's mad. Okay. Look, I I wish everyone the best. Look, to goes back, and I hope not occurs again. But uh, I have a sneaky feeling that we'll get the the relapse of her again. I know you hate to say it, but you know it's kind yeah. of. I think everyone's thinking along those lines, really. To be honest. I think we're going to get their little relapse or again. I just think we should just we should maybe just wait it out a little bit longer. Yeah, for sake of a couple of months, you know. Yeah, and then having it gone for good, then yeah. everyone, you know, you know, just something. It's just a hard. I came out as I think that, but no, just, I agree with you. I'd rather, see, I'd rather just, I'd rather not see the football back at the moment. I just, I just think it's too great a risk. Yeah, I just, I'm, yeah. I'm, weary, I'm wary. The young lad is starting back this week, Thursday now, under twelves, and. Boxing, he's starting back next month, and I mean, we're very wary letting him back. I suppose the, the, the boxing probably is, is probably there's more scope for being a bit safer there with the boxing, is there? Well, it, I, it, I, it, could, could you work with him? Say, could you work with him? I suppose I you're coming from home. Yeah, I, 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 I help yeah. out there in uh, coach. I do a bit of coaching yeah. out in, in the boxing as well. So I help him. I help out the long boxing club and. Um, just look at it's it. I can do a bit at home, but you need comp when you're in competitions. You need to be oh, in the ring. Know, yeah. you doing yeah. that. It's, yeah. just, it's just a little bit. It's a little bit dangerous, you know. It's a little. You have to be yeah. careful in this thing, you know. I have to be. This thing, this is this is killing. This is taking lives. This you know. Yeah, I oh, know. I agree with you completely. Yeah, I just think there's a, a big rush to go back with the football, but it doesn't make sense a lot of it, you know. When you see uh, overall restrictions being put in place, and then. You're playing football. Yeah, full blown sport like especially like Gaelic football, like where there's a lot, a lot, a lot of contact. You're gonna be all, it's all contact there. You're getting hit, you're getting slapped, you're, you're yeah. there's spits flying, there's blood yeah. flying. Exactly. You understand what Danny is, so this is the way it is. So I look at it's not that's what's not making a little bit of sense to me you now. Everything else is all hunky dory you now, but that's what's uh, catching me a little bit, you know. I just I hope I hope I'm wrong, I really hope I'm wrong. I hope everyone is safe and not happy with anyone God bless them all, but I just be a bit wary of it now. Yeah, I know you're right. I agree with you. Are you ready for your on the spots? Sorry? Are you ready for your on the spot questions? Oh, Jesus. Go on ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> First one, actually, a boxing orientated. Prime Ali or Mike Tyson? Oh, Ali all day. Really? Oh, all day, Ali. Is that the worst grace or not? <laughs> yeah, it was interesting to hear, hear your uh, take on that one now. Mm. 
I finished reading the book there on Tyson. Um, he, uh, he was some specimen as well. Oh, he's on real. Mike, Ty- Mike Tyson would be all the heavyweights right now. I, on the best heavyweights right now would be Fury, Joshua, Wilder. He'd beat them all in the one night. He would, you know, mm. yeah, prime. Yeah. He was just an animal back then. But as as people say, it just, I just think Ali back then he he was just so even he was so smart. But he did the George Foreman and yeah, yeah. And he laid up against the ropes. You know, he couldn't out thing and. I'd reckon he'd do the same to Tyson. He'd let Tyson batter him for so long and he'd do maybe the one thing again, you know? Tire him out, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you had a plan for everything. Tyson, Tyson wasn't a lad for 12 rounds. He couldn't really go 12 rounds. He'd always tire after seven, six or seven. and hmm. He'd always tire, so that's why he believed that cool. Ali was the black Superman. Cool. I was, uh, yeah, I was curious to get your take on that one now. Uh, best slashers player you've played with? Uh, has to be the one and only... Derm, Derm or Brady, I have to give it to, I'd say it'd be him or Michael Brady, but it's a close one. I have to give it to Derm or Brady. I just think he's serving, the best serving. I just think the man is just unreal, you know, un- unbelievable. I think there should be a statue up there from up his ashes, serve as he put in there to the club. And still he, going strong. He's up a, still going strong, up at six, going stronger than anyone at the moment. Mm. Up at six o'clock in the, in the morning, working five or six o'clock, working, finishes six, seven o'clock, in then training, slashers. Just he's up there to the front in and then all the, the time. Phenomenal the effort he puts in. I seen him runs this year and he at the start he was he was up there. He's up three the first three or four lads. So and he's he's 39, 40 years of age. So serious. Did he ever mind you wearing English jerseys, did he? Oh no, he wouldn't like it either. He gave me a few hard slaps as well. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be the starting forwards against the starting defenders, and I, I really went through a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I see you were looking for it as well. I used to walk up with a smile on my face, but then it wasn't hurt, but I was really broke up. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant stuff, Martin. Come here, thanks a million. Um thanks for taking the time out, lad. Uh you're a great one. Like, you know, I suppose that's the, you know, we, we, you know, one thing whenever we meet on the street or wherever, in any walk of life, we're always able to stop and have a chat. And the football is a, it's a big reason for that as well. And, you know, it, it uh, builds relationships on and off the pitch. And you were, um, t- thank you very much for your honesty as well, you know, and, um, you know, I was, I was curious to get, get your take on certain aspects and the challenges as well. And I pr- really appreciate you being so open and honest about it. I think it's very important for, for future generations. Well, Sean, it was an absolute honour to be uh, asked on here, first of all, and it's great to have a friend like yourself, I always chat you on the street, we always had a bit of crack, have a bit of banter, had a laugh, mm. and it's great to meet friends through, lifeline, lifelong friends through uh, football and stuff, and I wish you the best of luck in the future with this, and best of luck in life, and thanks very much for being a friend. Cheers, Martin, stay safe, appreciate it, and uh, hello to all the family as well, look after yourselves. God bless me, old friend, thank you Thanks very much. Thanks a million, buddy, all the best, good luck, bye.